Good evening. This is Pastor Cannon, Nashville Gospel Holy Temple Church, located here in Nash, Texas at 200 Bishop Cannon Way. Uh, we are so honored and thankful to God for this opportunity to come into your homes with the Wednesday night Bible study. And we are so grateful for each one of you that tune in every week. We want to say thank God for each one of you, Nashville Gospel Holy Temple, for joining me. And we're going to ask you to go on and get your Bible, your study pad, and your pen, and gather around, uh, and let's get off into the Word of God. I want to thank God for all my friends and 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 others, amen, I, that tune in to be with us. I read your comments, and I want you to know that I am so grateful and thankful that the Word of God is being a blessing. Uh, that's the main objective, and we thank God for you. We want to give honor and respect to our leadership, to Apostle Herman L. Murray, to Lady Danielle, and to our saintly mother in the gospel, Dr. Shirley Murray. We give honor to the elders of this house and their precious wives, and to each one of you. We're just, again, honored to be here. We thank God for this beautiful day that he has allowed us to see, and what an awesome day it is. It's a beautiful day today. I mean, this is a uh, the Lord really smiled on today, and I'm so grateful for it. And hopefully you got an opportunity maybe to, to get out, amen, and to enjoy the sunshine, amen, to enjoy this beautiful day. All right, we're going to go on and get off into the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our last Wednesday study, we started, amen, uh, did a series on the Sermon on the Mount, and we were in chapter 6 of verses 1 through 18. And you know the Sermon on the Mount on the Mount covers Matthew 5 through 7. It covers three chapters. Amen. And so what we're going to do tonight is go back to the beginning, and that's Matthew 5 and 1 through 12. That will be our scriptures for tonight. That's Matthew 5, 1 through 12. And, of course, this is a portion of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Amen. The greatest teacher. Amen. Praise God. And we have been talking about staying with the word of God. And so we are talking about and we're sharing with you some of the words of Jesus. Amen. To us. Amen. Not only to those in Bible days, but the word of God is for you and I today. Amen. Amen. So let's get off into it. The Sermon on the Mount. Of course, it covers Matthew 5 through 7. And this is the longest lesson, or, or you can say sermon, of Jesus in the Bible, or a discourse. This is the longest uh, Jesus at one time is recorded in the scriptures, amen, ministering to the disciples. Amen. And we need to understand that he was not only ministering to the disciples, amen, praise the Lord, but to all those that were gathered, amen, around him, amen, as he spoke the word of God, amen? All right, so our lesson text again is Matthew 5, 1 through 12. Previously, chapters 4, chapter 4 and the 17th verse, it talks about how that Jesus preached the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and he was calling men to repentance, so this is the backdrop, amen, of the Sermon on the Mount. Amen. Jesus preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand and calling men everywhere to repent. Amen. And everybody has to repent because that's the only way we're going to get into the kingdom of God. We have to make things right with God. Amen. Praise God. Now we see Jesus teaching about the foundation and character of life in the kingdom. If we're going to be a part of the kingdom of God, there, there are certain, that's a certain character about us. Be attitudes, be of this attitude. There are certain characteristics that should follow our lives. Amen. He's giving us the righteousness that is the standard of the kingdom. This is what is expected if we are children, amen, of the kingdom. So let's start there at Matthew 5 and 1. And seeing the multitudes. And, you know, Jesus was always concerned, amen, about people, was concerned about the multitude. Amen. And he's seeing the multitudes. The Bible say he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, 
his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them. So here Jesus is teaching. And it's so very important. Teaching is so very important. I put great value on teaching because, because you can learn so much. That's why I lo love Sunday school. Love Sunday school. Love the midweek services because the minister has an opportunity to slow down. Amen. You know, just uh, uh, a lot of times on the weekend, on a Sunday, we're throwing that net out there trying to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. And during the week, uh, we're able to slow down and really talk to the saints of God. So now Jesus teaches, is teaching, amen, praise the Lord, about the foundation and character of life in the kingdom. And he's on a mountain, and this mountain is in Galilee. It doesn't name it here, but th this mountain is in Galilee. And, and, of course, we know it was on a mountain that the law was given. Amen? And when the law was given, we know as we read Old Testament scriptures that the Lord came down upon the mountain. But now we see the Lord going up to the mountain, going up to the mountain to teach. When the Lord came down upon the mountain to give the law, that was thundering, that was lightning. Amen. Praise God. And the people were commanded to keep their distance. But now... In the new dispensation, amen, praise God. We see Jesus going up to the mountain, amen, praise the Lord. And the people have the ability, amen, praise the Lord, the freedom to draw nigh and hear the words of Christ. And, and what, a, what a great thing to be able to hear what thus said the Lord, amen, amen, praise God. And his disciples came unto him, those that were committed to him, amen, praise the Lord, that loved him. Amen. Committed to his teaching. Amen. Praise the Lord. Those that were in a learning mode. Everybody don't want to learn, but they were in a learning mode. And it's so very important. Amen. Praise the Lord that we always stay open to learning. All of us, we can learn. Amen. Amen. And the multitudes heard the sermon as well. And this portion of the Sermon on the Mount is the Beatitudes. It's a series of eight blessings. And even though we have 12 scriptures it's a series of eight blessings the last two are actually attached to the to the to the eighth one which is verse 10 so and these qualities give a picture of the character again of the true people of God and we notice as we study this that to each blessing a promise is attached to each blessing a promise is attached amen so Jesus opened his mouth saying number one he said blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven bless it and bless it speaks of the inner joy and peace that comes with being in a right relationship with God amen we are blessed people you know if you're saved and on the Lord's side amen it means you're favored by God and who don't want to be favored by God oh my God favor I'd rather be favored by God than to be favored by me and it's a blessing amen praise the Lord walking in the favor Amen of the Lord. Amen. And that word blessed also refers to a pledge of divine reward for the spiritual character of the righteous. Amen. Praise the Lord. When we walk, amen, and live like God tells us to live, amen, God is promising us, amen, praise the Lord, a divine reward. Amen. Praise the Lord. We don't, we don't live like God say live, amen, and he don't bless us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we see that amen, in our text here. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. We look at that many times and we think about the uh, poor physically, people that just don't have much. And, but, but it goes a whole lot deeper than that. When he talked about poor, amen, notice he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Are those who come humbly to God. And th this is what Jesus is talking about. He starts out these eight, eight uh, series of blessings, amen, praise the Lord, with humility. Amen. It's a, you're in a blessed position. When you come humbly to God, you can receive something of God. Those who come humbly to God, repenting of their sins, poor in spirit, realize whether I am rich naturally or poor naturally, I'm still poor in the spirit. I still need God in my life. That's a blessed individual. That's the kind of individual that God can use and God can save and God can deliver and God can raise up. That person that understands their confidence is not in themselves. Amen. And they know in themselves they're poor. 
They're insufficient. Amen. Praise the Lord. They know that even their self-righteousness can never measure up to the righteousness of God. They understand their need for God. That's a blessed position to be in when you understand that. So he said, blessed, those who come humbly to God, repenting of their sin, recognizing their lack and their need for God. And you know, all of us need God. Whether, we, whether you have money, uh, 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 whatever you have, everybody needs God. Am I correct? And we see that in this day and time. Amen, praise the Lord, that all of us need, amen, the help of God. Whatever our status is, humility is the way to salvation. It's the way to the kingdom of God. Humility. Come as a, come as a child. Come humble. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We don't come, amen, in arrogance. We don't come in self-righteousness. We come humbly, knowing, amen, praise the Lord, that we need God in our lives. Amen. Uh, we recognize our total Dependence upon him. Poor in spirit. Poor in spirit. We need him in our lives. And the promise attached to this uh, beatitude is the kingdom of heaven. That person that's poor in spirit, amen, that's the person that's going to make it to the kingdom of God. Amen. That person that recognizes and acknowledges, amen, that I need God in my life. That's a blessed individual. And I want to say to you, maybe you're listening, amen, to the lesson and you're not saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Understand and, and realize your need for God. That's a blessed position to be in, to, to realize that and understand that. Amen. Praise the Lord. And to come to God in confidence, believing him to save you and to set you free. Amen. So blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Heaven, those that repent of their sin, accept Christ as their personal Savior, amen, praise the Lord. They're in a position, amen, to enjoy the fruits of the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. They that mourn. And we think about the word mourn, we think of pain, and we think of grief of, of the soul. Uh, over, over a lost one, uh, over a loved one, over some catastrophe, or, or, or even mourning uh, over sin. Amen. Blessed are they that mourn, mourn for their own sins, become godly sorrow for of their own sins. That's a blessed individual to understand that I have failed God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I acknowledge that. I'm mourning over that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not rejoicing in that. It hurts my heart that I have hurt God. Amen? So mourning. Mourning for others that are still in their sin. Blessed are they that mourn. Amen. We that mourn uh, are concerned about those that are in sin and those that are, are, are dealing with afflictions. Amen. Praise God. Blessed are those that mourn, that are compassionate. Amen. Praise the Lord. Concerned about the lost. He said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. That's the promise. Amen. They shall be comforted. Amen. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 1 and 3 through 4, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort. He's the God of all comfort. Amen. Can't, uh, nobody knows how to comfort you like God. Amen. And when you have that spirit, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That spirit of compassion. Amen. Praise the Lord for others. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God will comfort you in your time of need. Blessed be the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation. He comforts us. And, and that's a future, that's a present promise and a future promise because he blesses us even now when we go through Amen. Comforted. He eased the grief or the distress that we're going through. He consoles us in our time of pain and need. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for that. Ooh, thank God he's such a comforter. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord that comforts us. Amen. He said, in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. He comforts us so we can be able to comfort those that are going through. Amen. We can be compassionate to others as the Lord has been to us. Amen. 
by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Amen. And we know we future comfort. Amen. Revelation 21 and 4, God is going to wipe all tears from our eyes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have to mourn sometime. We have to cry sometime. We have to experience grief sometime on this side. But even in this present life, he gives us strength to go through that and to deal with that. But there's a future comfort coming where he's going to wipe away all the tears from our eyes. Be encouraged. Amen. Praise God. The favor of God rests upon you. Amen. You living for God? God got you. Amen. So blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be. Anybody ever experienced the comfort of God? Anybody ever went through something and he was right there for you? Glory to God. When it got to the point where it seems that it was unbearable or you couldn't take anymore, but he was there. He was there for you. Amen. Praise God. Blessed are they that mourn. Amen. For they shall be comforted. He said, blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth, the meek. Amen. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Amen. The meek, the meek in spirit. Amen. Praise Lord. It means a spirit of gentleness and self-control. So blessed are the meek, a spirit of gentleness and self-control. Those who submit themselves to God are blessed people. <laughs> blessed people who submit themselves to God and submit themselves to the will of God. Amen. Gentle. Amen. Praise the Lord. Self-control. Amen. Praise the Lord. Free from malice. Amen. And, and this word meek does not mean weak. It does not mean ineffective. Amen. Praise God. But we trust God. We trust God, amen, praise the Lord, to take care of us, amen, praise the Lord, and we know the right way to approach God and to deal with others, amen, is with a gentle spirit, amen. So blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The uh, Some, as David said in 37 and 11, but the meek shall inherit the earth, there it is, shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. There's no... that. Uh, that's a blessing. For the meek, there's a, it's a place of peace. It's a place of peace. Amen. Even though we're in a, in a world full of turmoil, amen, praise God. And because we've accepted Christ as our personal Savior and living for him, amen, he gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding. Isn't that amazing? That's the kind of God that we served. Amen. Amen. The favor of God is resting upon the meek. That's the promise. They shall inherit the earth. Amen. Amen. The, the, the meek, those that can be cool when others are hot, you know, calm, you know, uh, deal with things the way Jesus dealt with them. Amen. Praise God. Amen. In a spirit of love and in a spirit of gentleness. Amen. Amen. Uh, the meek, those that would rather forgive and let go than to seek revenge. Jesus say, that's a reward for you that would rather forgive and let go than seek revenge. There's a reward, amen, for you. Meekness has a real tendency to promote health. When you are meek, when you are gentle and compassionate and cool-headed, uh, uh, it tends to promote health. It keeps you healthy. And, and also to promote wealth, comfort, and safety. Amen, praise the Lord. Even in this world, amen, when, where there's so much sickness and poverty and and distress and confusion amen praise the lord god blesses the meek amen and he takes care of he takes care amen of us amen so blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth and we thank god amen for his goodness and when they were talking about inherit the earth amen praise the lord uh, they could have been referring to inherit the promised land, Canaan, the promised land. Amen, praise the Lord, w which is similar to the goodness of God. Amen, because if you live for God and, and do what God tells you to do and live like God tells you to do, he'll bless you. Even he'll bless you. He'll, he'll bless you in every area of your life. Amen? Amen, because that's the kind of God 
that we served. How many are blessed today? Amen. How many thank God for the blessings of God? Amen. That inner joy and peace that comes from being in a right relationship with God, knowing that God has promised divine reward. Amen. For our spiritual character. Amen. Praise the Lord when we live right. Amen. We know something good is coming out of it. Amen. Amen. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. The psalmist said in 42 and 1, as the heart panted after the water brook, so panted my soul after thee, O God. Second verse, my soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before him? I'm thirsty after God, after righteousness. Amen. That's a blessed individual. Amen. That's thirsting after the more of God, after the righteousness of God, the will of God. Amen. Hungry for it. Passionate for it. Want it. Amen. Praise God. That's a blessed individual. And when you hunger and thirst, of course, the promise is you'll be filled. Amen. You'll get just what you hunger for. You'll get just what you thirst for. You'll get a closer relationship with God. Amen. And you'll get a blessing. Amen. From the Lord. The psalm, psalm is said in 63 and 1, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and a thirsty land where no water is. And what am I thirsting after? What am I hungry for? Verse 2, to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Just want to see your power and your glory. That's what I thirst and hunger for. Amen. The world thirsts after riches and fame and, and fortune and, and all this stuff. But we the righteous, amen, we thirst after the more of God. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness because we know all these other things shall be added. Is there anybody thirsty for the more of God? Glory to God. Hungry for the more of God. Is there anything, amen, praise the Lord in you that, that wants more? Amen. Want to see the glory and the power of God. Amen. Revealed not only in your own personal life but in this world. Amen. Praise God. Thirst and hunger. Is there anybody thirsty and hungry? Amen. For the more of God. Hunger and thirst are appetites that return frequently and call for fresh satisfaction. You know, you can be hungry and thirsty today, eat a good meal, mm, satisfied. But tomorrow, what is it? You're hungry and thirsty again. So that the hunger and thirst is an appetite that returns frequently for fresh satisfaction. In other words, we don't get all we want from God in one day, in one seeking. Amen. Praise God. We don't, we don't, we don't stop. We always, it's all right to want more. Glory to God. A, a greater understanding of God, a greater understanding of his will for our lives. Amen. Praise God. Hunger and thirst after that. Amen. Praise God. Hunger and thirst. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you're hungry and thirsty, it will cause you to labor for supplies. We don't just desire, but we go after. When you, when you get hungry and thirsty and you want to eat, you don't just sit there and just desire it. You don't just desire it. You get up. Am I right about it? You get up and you go to the refrigerator or the pantry uh, if you can't find anything in there, you go to the store or you order something curbside from the restaurant or if you're in an area where you can go in, what you know, if, if that's what you're hungry and you're thirsty, amen, praise the Lord, you do something to satisfy that hunger and thirst. And so that's what we do as Christians. It's a blessing when you hunger and thirst after God because just like in the natural, when you're hungry and thirst, after something and you once you consume that food amen you're filled and so this is what the lord is saying if you hunger and thirst after me you shall be filled and if you're hungering and thirsting after the right thing after the righteousness of god amen praise god i want the will of god how many of you want the will of god to be done in your life it's all about 
I mean, we're in that season now. I, I mean, if ever there was a day, amen, praise the Lord, to be hungry and thirsty for the more of God, that time is now. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And not just hungry, I say, in a moment. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then, because that appetite and that hunger, amen, praise the Lord, should be frequent. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want God today. I want his righteousness. I want to understand his will today for my life. What he wants from me today. Amen. Praise the Lord. And tomorrow is the same thing. Amen. Hunger and thirst after the righteousness. Amen. Of God. The will of God. Number one for our individual lives. Lord, what is your will? Pray, Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want your will to be done in me first. Amen. I'm hungry and thirsty. If you see anything in me, Lord, that shouldn't be, Lord, take it out. Take it out, Lord, and strengthen me. Amen. Can we say that and really be truthful? Or are we hiding something, you know, back in the corners, amen, praise the Lord, of our heart? Amen. Something that we don't want God to touch on that right there. Amen. Praise the Lord. But when you're hungry and thirsty after the more of God, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Amen. This is why we pray. We, we sh that's why we should pray, not just wanting stuff, not just praying for a physical need to be met. But, Lord, meet the spiritual need of my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let, your, let the will of God be done in me. And not only do we pray and, and thirst after righteousness for ourselves, amen, but for our world. We pray for those that are not saved. We are hungry and thirsty after souls. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Put in time, some prayer time. Amen. Praying for these people that are lost. Amen. That God will save them and deliver them and set them free. Anybody hungry for that? That's one of, the, that's one of my greatest joys. That's one of my greatest joys. Now that God has saved me and delivered me, and I know it's real, amen, praise God. One of my greatest joys is to see other people saved. Amen, praise God. Amen, it's almost like it satisfies, amen, even my natural appetite. Sometimes I see a soul get saved, and I forget about it. I was hungry physically because, you know, I'm just excited, amen, that another soul was snatched out of the hand of the enemy. Another soul is in a position, amen, to go back with Jesus when he comes. Another soul, amen, praise the Lord, is in a position, amen, praise the Lord, to get on the battlefield for Christ, amen, and be an ambassador for him in these last days. Amen, praise God. Another soul, amen, is ready for the kingdom of God. Amen, praise God. But we got to hunger and we got to thirst, amen. Amen. Praise God. And I say again, when you're hungry and thirst, you go after it. Yeah, you, you go after whatever it takes to feel that hunger. When you're thirsty for a glass of water, amen, praise God. You don't just sit there with that desire, but you go get you some water. And you don't just get it and look at it and hold it. But you do what it takes, amen, to quench that thirst. Amen. Same thing about hunger. So it's the same thing in the spirit. So it takes prayer. It takes study of the word of God. It takes seeking the face of God. It takes attending church. Amen. Praise God. Amen. There are some, there are some in some areas of our country at this time, amen, praise the Lord, that are not even able to worship in their building. And there are many of us, amen, that uh, we are able to do it. And people still don't come to church. And my question is, and I'm not talking about people sick. I'm not talking about people with underlying conditions. I'm talking about well, healthy people, you know. But they, they're, not, they're not hungry. They're not hungry. They're not thirsty after the righteousness of God. Amen. This is a part of it. Coming to the house of God, hearing the word of God, hearing a now word that you can apply to your life. Amen. Now, a, a, a up-to-date word, a word that can help you on, on a daily basis in this spiritual journey. You got to hunger for it. You got to really want it. You know, a person that's not really hungry, amen, you can set a feast before them. You can set a feast before them, if, but then if, they're not, if they're not hungry, amen, it can look good, smell good, taste good. It can be the best tasting food on the planet. But if they're not hungry, they're not going to eat it. And this is the way it is even in the spirit. Amen. God is giving us provisions and making ways for us. Amen. To feel, amen, praise the Lord, the spiritual hunger. Amen. And the spiritual thirst for more of him. Amen. But if a person is not hungry, they won't eat. 
Amen. But I believe I'm talking to people that want the more of God. And I want you to encourage you, amen, praise the Lord, that if you are hungry, amen, you will be filled. What does that mean? Your soul will be satisfied. He satisfied the longing soul. If that's what you want, God said, you shall be filled. Didn't he say so? Remember, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst, amen, after, not after worldliness, not after carnality, not after things, not after stuff, but after righteousness. They shall, not maybe, not might, they shall be filled. And you know, the, the more you seek the, the will of God and the righteousness of God, the more God blesses you. Do I have any witnesses? It just takes you to another level, another level, another place, amen, in God. Amen. He, he opens and reveals, amen, himself in his word to you in a greater, uh, in a greater way. It's like your spiritual eyes come open to what God is saying in a greater way. Amen. And I want to encourage you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Saints of God. Amen. That are hungry and thirsting after righteousness. Keep on seeking the face of God. You shall be filled. Amen. Blessed are the merciful. Verse 7. The fifth. Uh, the fifth beatitude. Blessed are the merciful. And that merciful means showing or exercising mercy. Showing or exercising mercy is treating people with kindness and forgiveness, not cruelty or harshness. Amen. But just showing, exercising mercy. Amen. Treating people kindly. Doing, actually, doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. And, this, and Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we reap. What we sow. When we are merciful to others and we are kind to others, it comes back around. Do I have any witnesses? It comes back around. But uh, you treat people cruel, cruel, uh, cruelly and, and harshly and mistreat people and, uh, you know, don't give people a chance. Uh, uh, no forgiveness, no forbearance. Amen. Praise the Lord. That thing has a way of coming back around. Amen. So he said, blessed are the merciful. Amen, praise the Lord. That person, amen, that is merciful. Amen, praise the Lord. That person has, that, uh, uh, has an inner joy and peace that comes with being in a right relationship with God because that person is favored by God. And God is, God is blessing the merciful. Amen. Proverbs 11 and 17 said, the merciful man doeth good to his own soul. When we are merciful and kind and compassionate to others, we do good to our own soul. Amen. Praise God. Again, because what, what, uh, what, goes, what goes around comes around. Amen. But the wise man said, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. You know, unkind, won't give people a chance, uh, unforgiving, all of this kind of stuff. Amen. That's, it has a way of coming back on you. Amen. Amen. Because, again, we reap what we show. Amen. Praise the Lord. Showing compassion and help unto others. Amen. Will come back to you again. That's the promise. Shall obtain mercy or compassion or forgiveness. Because you can rest assured there will come a time in our individual lives when we need it. When we'll need mercy. Amen. Praise God. So show mercy. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a blessing. Amen. To, uh, to be kind and to show mercy and do what you can. Amen. For others. Amen. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. Now, we dealt with that one. Amen. A little bit in our last lesson. So we won't deal with that one too much. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, tonight. But blessed are the pure in heart. We talked about that, how that Jesus places a high level of emphasis on the purity of the heart. We already talked about that because we were talking about checking your motives, right? Because that's, that's, that's the heart, what comes out of that heart, the why we do things, not just the act, but the why we do things. So he said, blessed are the pure, amen, um, the pure 
in heart, for they shall, and I want to, don't you want to see God? Of course, you know, in this life, no man can see God and live, but we're going to see him one day. Amen. Praise the Lord. The blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall. See, God, keep that heart right. Do what God tells you to do. Yes, yes. Amen. Praise God. You shall see God. A heart, a pure heart is a heart determined to do God's will. You know, just, you know, that's a pure heart, just determined to do God's will, to to live like God said live, talk like God said talk, walk like he said walk, live like he said live. That's a pure heart. Amen? Amen. A heart kept pure from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. A pure heart. Amen. The promise is we shall see God. One day he will be visible to our transfigured eyes because we shall see him as he is. Amen. What a blessing. To be favored by God. Keep that heart right. Amen. That's joy to a saint of God. Amen. Praise God that knowing that one of these days, amen, praise God, we're going to go to heaven. Amen. And we're going to see the Lord and we're going to see him. Amen. In peace. Amen. Amen. The next one, number verse nine, amen, which is the seventh. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, those peacemakers, those who have been reconciled first to God. Because before you can be a peacemaker, you, you have to be reconciled to God, have made peace with God. Amen. And this is why a lot of people are such turmoil in their spirit and can't get along with anybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because that, that, that relationship with God, amen, praise the Lord, haven't been haven't been fixed. Amen. Praise God. Need to be reconciled to God. Amen. Peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. God will own you when you're a peacemaker. And I want God to own me, right? Ah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Have been reconciled to God. A person who brings about peace. A peacemaker is a person that brings about peace. A peacemaker don't like confusion. And when you see a person that uh, look like they just love it when confusion is going on or love it when they done heard something negative about somebody or, or look like that excites them, amen, praise the Lord, something ain't right about that picture because uh, that's not the character, amen, praise the Lord, of the children of God. Amen. We are peacemakers. We love peace. Amen. A person who brings about peace, amen, praise the Lord, amen, and if there's conflict, a person who helps solve conflict a person who helps keep keep away conflict and help solve conflict uh, that's a peacemaker amen they see something and and if they can can bridge the gap and 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 smooth things out amen between uh two people they do that peacemakers amen amen blessed are the peacemakers help solve conflict and reach a peaceful amen solution uh, 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 peacemakers, those that have a peaceable disposition, a uh, 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 disposition to love, amen, uh, and desire and delight in peace. Amen, praise the Lord. That's the kind of disposition a child of God has. And, and God says, amen, praise the Lord, you're highly favored. Yes, you're a peacemaker, you're highly favored. Not only a peaceful disposition, but a peaceful conversation. Amen, praise the Lord. Uh, a peacemaker preserves peace. He preserves it. He preserves it. He, he's not the cause of confusion. He's not the cause of conflict. Amen. That's why peacemakers are not um, gossipers. And uh, 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 peacemakers don't do that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because, amen, peacemakers, amen, preserve peace. Amen. Praise the Lord. And they, peacemakers, know how to recover peace when it's broken. Amen. Praise God. And the Lord said, blessed are the peacemakers. And the promise is they shall be called the children of God. Amen. Meaning God will own them. Amen. And oh my God. And I just, I don't want, I dare think, amen, what happens to the peace breakers. <laughs> I want to be a peacemaker. Amen. If I can do something, amen, praise the Lord to keep peace. You know, sometimes keeping peace in some situations, you just have to walk away from them. You, you, you simply have to just walk away from them. In some situations, just be quiet. Just walk away from them. And I, I tell them sometimes when it's dealing with uh, 
husband and wives, but it can actually relate to anybody. You know, it takes two people to argue and to, and to fight. It takes two. Somebody got to have sense enough to, to, to be quiet, to walk away. Amen? Praise God. Uh, even one scripture said to, to, to agree with your adversary in the way. Amen. Praise the Lord. You, you know you got the right to divide that. But, you know, we are about solving, uh, uh, keeping peace, preserving peace, and not causing, amen, conflict. Amen. Amen. Shall be called the children of God. Let's move on to the, uh, the eight one. Blessed are they which are persecuted, tenth verse, for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And this is the eight. Amen. Praise the Lord of the Beatitudes. 11 and 12, if you, if you read them, they are related to verse 10. 11 and 12, they're related to that eight uh, Beatitudes. So blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. And you know, out of all these blessings, amen, praise the Lord, uh, Jesus said, blessed are they which are persecuted, which means opposition is going to come. When you stand for right, Amen. Praise the Lord. When you, uh, uh, when you're meek in your spirit, amen. Praise hungering and thirsting after righteousness and, and merciful and keeping your heart pure and, and all of this, amen. Praise somebody not going to like it. Opposition comes. Persecution comes to the righteous. Amen. Amen. It does. He said, blessed are they which are persecuted. Amen. Praise the Lord for righteousness sake or suffering for Christ's sake. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed are you. Notice the key to that scripture is for righteousness sake. Amen. You're persecuted not because you did something wrong. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not because you violated the word of God, but you're being persecuted. Amen. Because you did the right thing. The, the Lord say you're blessed. That's a reward for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Opposition comes to those who follow Christ, and it's just a given. It's just a given, amen, when you live for God, out of all the good that you do, amen, praise the Lord, you, opposition is going to come. It came for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen, did it not, amen, it did, it came for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, so it's going to happen to us as well, but blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Don't worry about it. Amen. You got a great reward in the end. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You may be persecuted. Amen. But one day, amen, praise the Lord, you're going to walk those streets of gold. Amen. Praise God. Blessed, he said, are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now, they talking about you for his sake. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then you still in a blessed position. Amen. Amen. People will talk about you. They'll call your names. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, you're holy. Your name on the road. They, 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 they'll talk about you. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, holier than thou. Amen. Praise God. They'll talk about you. Say you think you. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a given. It's just a given. Amen. Many times, amen, praise the Lord, because people simply don't understand. Amen. Praise the Lord, because their lives have not, not been changed by the power of God. Amen. And many of us, amen, praise the Lord, amen, some of us, rather, did some of the same things before the Lord saved us. We tried to look over into holiness and to, into righteousness, look over into Christianity. Amen. And you can't look into this. You got to, you got to be a part of it to understand it and to comprehend it. Amen. Praise God. So a lot of people are on the outskirts looking in and, and from their perspective, amen, from, uh, from their perspective, amen, praise the Lord, they, they, they don't understand it. Amen. And so they talk about it. Amen. A person um, uh, rejects a lot of times and condemns a lot of times things that they don't understand and can't comprehend. Amen. What we got to do for them is we got to be meek, right? Not weak. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not ineffective. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not a pushover, but we got to pray for him, though. Amen. We got to do what the word of God told us to do. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be mocked. You're going to be abandoned and you're going to be ridiculed. And you're going to sometimes be called everything but what you are, a child of God. But when you look at the life of Jesus Christ, the same thing happened to him. They call him Beelzebub. They call him uh, child of the devil. Amen. Praise the Lord. They uh, talked about him. 
Amen. Praise the Lord, the son of the living God, who did no sin, neither was a... He did no sin. And there was nothing that Jesus did that was wrong. He, was, he lived a life free from sin and shame. Amen. Praise the Lord. But they ridiculed him. They mocked him. They abandoned him. They rejected him. Amen. Praise the Lord. And they, uh, they spat on him. And we know the story. They persecuted. Yes, they persecuted our Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it bears to say, amen, because we carry the image of him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because he's in our life, we're going to be persecuted as well. But bless it. Amen. He humbled himself, came obedient to the death of the cross, and what happened? God highly exalted him, gave him a name above every name. Now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for you and I. Amen? Praise God. So bless it. Amen. So don't worry about it. Jesus said in John 15 and 18, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Jesus said, if the world hates you, understand they hated me. Before they hated you. And it's not so much you, it's the Christ that's in you. Amen. They recognize the Jesus that's in you. He said in that 19th verse of John 15, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Because you're not a part of that system, that world system anymore. Amen. Praise the Lord. You, you, you are not living a life of, of, of sin anymore. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're free from that bondage. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're out of it. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and because of it, that world system, amen, praise the Lord, it hates you. Amen. Praise the Lord. But that's just a part of it. Blessed are they that revive you. Amen. And that persecute you and say all man of evil against you. Jesus said for my sake. He even said in Luke 6, 26, a portion of that war unto them when all men shall speak well of you. So we got a problem when everybody like us and everybody speak well of you. Because when you do the right thing, it's just, it's just a given that somebody is not going to like it. It's just a part of it. Amen. What did uh, Paul tell Timothy in 2 Timothy 3 and 12? Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall. You're going to live godly. You're going to suffer persecution. But the Lord said he's going to bless us. Didn't he say so? in this life and with eternal life in the world to come, but it's with persecution. So it's a part of the package. Tell somebody it's a part of the package. Amen. But blessed are you. Favor, that means the favor of God is resting on your life. Glory to God. That's something you can rejoice in. And that's what that 12th verse uh, says. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. My goodness. Amen. Because I'm identified with Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You're one of them Christians. Thank you, Jesus. You recognize that. You see the light of Christ in me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I don't take offense to it. I'm, I'm honored that you recognize the Christ that's in me. Thank you, Jesus. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward. Will somebody say great? Great is your reward. Amen. In heaven. Great is their reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Which lets us know that you're not the only one that's going through. You're not the only one that's, we're not the only ones that have been persecuted. Amen. Praise the Lord. Opposed and talked about. Amen. And criticized. The prophets before us. Amen. Those that live for God. Amen. Before us. Went through the same thing. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But heaven is their reward. And we want to close, amen, reading, amen, praise the Lord, from, amen, uh, 1 Peter, I believe it's 1 Peter, 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, where Paul, uh, uh, Peter, I'm sorry, talks about the Christian and suffering. And it's hard for us sometimes to understand how blessed we are, the suffering part. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I wanted to read this, this portion here, and that's 1 Peter 4 and 12. Amen. Where Peter said, be loved. And you got to know this, uh, that God loves you, irregardless of what you're dealing with or going through. Amen. That God loves you. Amen. And I, I say that all the time. Amen. And I say it because I know it's true. Scripture confirms it, and I believe it, and I know it. 
I know God loves me. Amen. Praise God. And it's one thing about the Lord. He will never put more on us than we can bear. We are in a blessed position. Amen. Praise the Lord. We that are saved are experiencing the favor of God. That, that, it's just, it's just, that's what it is. It's just favor. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And each one of these blessings that we've talked about, amen, there was a promise attached to it. There's something good that comes out of it. Amen. Praise the Lord. There is a reward. Amen. Praise the Lord. A divine reward for the spiritual character of the righteous. When the, the righteous walk in the will of God and do what God told them to do, amen, praise the Lord, there is a reward attached to it. So he said, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Amen, praise the Lord. And, and I've been there. Amen, praise the Lord. It's a lesson that we have to learn as we grow in God. Amen, praise the Lord. You know, you think I'm doing everything right, and then boom, you know, this, this is happening, you know, and, and it's, it's hard for us, amen, praise the Lord, from a human perspective to comprehend it. And that's why it's so important that we pray and seek the will of God and study the will of God and understand, amen, praise the Lord, that this suffering is not to destroy us, amen, praise the Lord, but to bless us. So he told us to rejoice in as much as you are partakers. And this is why we are rejoicing, not so much in the suffering, but the, 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 the cause of the suffering. We are partakers of Christ's suffering. That when his glory shall be revealed, there's the promise, his glory shall be revealed, you shall be glad with exceeding joy. Rejoice now because when it's all over, you're going to be glad with exceeding, exceeding joy. Amen? Because a blessing is coming out of it. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, there it is. Happy are ye. Amen? For the spirit, that, that, that's, that says something, that the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. Amen? On that part, he's evil spoken of, but on your part, he's glorified. Oh, God is getting the glory out of your life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we have so much to be thankful for and to rejoice about. Amen. But, but he said, don't let none of you suffer as a murderer now. Amen. We don't want to suffer as a murderer. And I tell you all the time that there are more than one way to murder. Amen. Praise the Lord. People think they got to have an Uzi, a switchblade, or, you know, a shotgun or uh, a knife and uh, something of that sort. Amen, praise the Lord, but there are more than one way to murder. You can, you can kill a person with your tongue. And so, you know, we, we don't want to be guilty. Many of us wouldn't do any bodily, physically body harm, bodily harm to somebody. Just say, I'm a Christian, you know, but you, we have to watch this. We got to make sure that we don't take that tongue and destroy a person. Amen? Praise God. If you're going to say something, speak words of exhortation, words of strength to build up and to encourage and I know sometimes the truth hurts, uh, but the, the, the truth is meant to encourage and to build up because if a person would take that and apply it to their life, they'll be better. But you know what I mean. Amen. Praise the Lord. Talking about them, down in them. We, we, let's, let's not do that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's not, be, let's, let's not suffer in that manner. Amen. As a murderer or suffer as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matter. Now, now we don't want to suffer. You, you, you're getting in trouble because you got in somebody's business, and then they, t uh, and then they asked you out. That's not suffering for his sake because you were, that has nothing to do with his righteousness. Amen? Praise God. So if we're going to suffer, let's not suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer, as a busybody in other men's matters amen i think about it sometimes you know we don't have time amen praise the lord to be suffering as a busybody lord we we need all this time we got to take care of ourselves and to keep ourselves in the will of god and seek and 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 seek the righteousness of god amen seek the will of god for our lives and to witness and tell people about the goodness of god and to pray for souls amen and to encourage the discourage Amen, praise the Lord, and to strengthen the weak. We got so much we got to do. We don't, we don't have time. Amen? How many agree with me on that? We don't have time for that. Amen, praise the Lord. So, uh, 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 so we don't want to suffer as a murderer or as a thief 
or as an evildoer, as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet, we're we going to suffer. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. The other things that we listed above, we ought to be ashamed if we're suffering for that. But if you're suffering because you're a Christian, if you're suffering because you're walking right, you're talking right, you're living right, and you're doing what the Word of God tells you to do, and you're living like God tells you to live, you don't have nothing to be ashamed of. Hold your head up. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. But let him glorify God on this behalf. Thank you, Jesus. I was, I was counted worthy, worthy to suffer for the name of Christ or to go through for Jesus. Amen? Amen. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And the Bible says, if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So we got to, if we want to be blessed of God, we got to stay with the word of God. Amen? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, that's what the scriptures say, scarcely be saved. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? And so we got to do all we can to stay in this blessed position. Amen? Amen. Thank God for this teaching that came from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord for these beatitudes. Amen. Thank God for this series of blessings. Amen. Thank God that Jesus teaches about the foundation and character of life in the kingdom where none of us will be lost or um, misunderstood. That these, these things, these characters, amen, this, this is the righteousness that is the standard of his kingdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, that's what he's talking about, amen, in these scriptures. Amen. Poor in spirit. Dependent. This is the character of the Christian, we're, we're dependent upon God. Our confidence is not in ourself, not in our flesh. It's, not in, it's, it's in God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. We, we, we mourn. Amen. Praise the Lord. We, we, uh, uh, we have to, uh, we, we mourned. Amen. Praise the Lord. Over our sins, we accepted Christ as our personal Savior. We mourn for those that are still, still in sin, those that are dealing with, amen, loss, and those that are dealing with, Amen. Uh, with great tragedies in their life. We pray for them. We're concerned about them. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we know, amen, praise the Lord, that in our time of need, God is going to comfort us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Th these are the characteristics of the kingdom. We're meek. Not weak, but we're meek. We're meek. We're gentle. We're kind. Amen. Praise the Lord. We hunger. We thirst after his righteousness, his will. We're merciful. We know how to extend mercy and compassion to others because it was extended, amen, to us. And we keep our heart, amen, praise the Lord, in the right place and keep it pure in the sight of God, amen. And we're peacemakers, amen. The peace of God is what rules in our lives, amen. We're controlled and guided by that peace, amen. And we love peace. We love keeping peace, amen. And we love doing whatever we can, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. To solve conflict. Amen. Praise God. And we know we're going to, and because of it, we know we're going to be persecuted. But we know we're going to, but we're going to rejoice because we understand that if we do these things, that there is a blessing attached. Be encouraged, people of God. I pray to God, amen, that I have explained it in a way that you can understand it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Or uh, understand, amen, the scriptures, and I pray that you received what I, uh, the Lord gave me to share with you, and we will be in the Beatitudes, and not the Beatitudes, but back on the Sermon on the Mount, another portion of it, amen, praise the Lord, on next Wednesday, if the Lord delay his coming, amen, praise the Lord, and he allow us to see it, amen, praise the Lord, we'll be back, amen, on the Sermon on the Mount. But these are the words of Jesus. Go over them, study them, uh, read them again, amen, praise the Lord, and know, amen, that if you're living for the Lord, amen, praise the Lord, you're in a blessed place. The favor of God rests upon you. The favor of God rests upon you. You're in a good place. And I want to encourage you that are saved, amen, keep your hand in God's hand. Keep your hand in God's hand. 
and stay with the word of God. And you stay with the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going we're gonna to complete this journey. Amen. Praise the Lord. In this realm, in the earth realm. And we're going to make it. Amen. Praise the Lord. To the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. I love you with the love of God. Be encouraged. Let's continue to pray for each other. Let's continue to pray for our world. Pray for our government. Amen. Pray especially for those that are lost and not saved. But let's, let's uh, not forget to pray for our brothers and sisters, those we know by name and those that we don't know by name because God got people everywhere. And let's pray for each other. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And I know that God is not through. Amen. Blessing us. He's not blessed through blessing you. He's not through blessing me. He's not through blessing us. It's a blessing in serving and serving the Lord. God bless you. We're going to pray and we're going to let you go. Amen. Praise God. We ask you to amen right there in your homes or wherever you are. If you're in a position to amen, just to bow your heads and get your mind on the Lord. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you today. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you for your precious word. We thank you, Lord, for helping us to understand and comprehend what a blessed position we're in. Glory to God. And we thank you for this inner joy and satisfaction in knowing that we are walking in your word and doing what your words say. And we thank you for the promises. Glory to God. Not only promises present, but promises future that are attached. Amen. Praise the Lord to the people of God. Lord, we thank you for it right now. We love you, Lord. We thank you for all things. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray a special prayer on all those that are under the sound of my voice that you will bless and strengthen and encourage those that are saved and delivered and set free. Bless them right now in Jesus' name. Meet needs, make ways out of no way, which I know you're doing, Lord, and we thank you for it. Glory to God. Those that are sick in their bodies, Lord, touch, heal their bodies, and raise them up for your glory and for your honor. Maybe there's someone under the sound of my voice that's got discouraged along the way. Oh, God, encourage them in their hearts, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it right now. Bless the children. Glory to God. Keep your loving arms of protection around them as they go to school. Glory to God, whether they're in the physical school or online. Help them in their studies, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and keep them safe. We pray for our mothers, our seniors. Glory to God. Keep your loving arms of protection around them as well. Glory to God. We pray for our leadership. We pray for leaders all over this country, amen, that are standing up declaring the whole counsel of God. Bless them and strengthen. Glory to God. Meet their each and every need, and we thank you for it right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for all things. Continue to have your way in our lives, and we'll give you the glory and the praise for it. In the precious and powerful name of Jesus, let everyone say amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. We love you, Nashville Gospel. And thank you so much for, for staying in here with me. Praise God with the lesson. And go back over it, you know. Go back over it and study it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, read it again. Amen. Praise the Lord. And um, again, because this word uh, that we are studying, the words of Jesus are very important. Amen. That he's giving us. Amen. Concerning the kingdom. Amen. Concerning the kingdom, the standard of the kingdom, the standard of the kingdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's giving us qual uh, th uh, these eight blessings, these qualities. Give a picture of the character character of the true people of God. Amen. So it's good to study it from time to time. Amen. I love you with the love of Jesus. Thank you so much. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you don't mind, just say amen. Just let us know that you were a part of the study and we appreciate it and we hope to see you real soon. We had a beautiful, awesome time this past weekend. Join us if you are in the area and you're able to join us for service here at Nashville Gospel Holy Temple. We'll be so glad to have you to worship with us. Amen. Until we meet again, God bless. Bye-bye.